Action. Upper GI, first to AP, if you would, please lie supine. In the center of the table. Straight on the table. Our IR once again is 14 by 17 lengthwise for all of these. The marker placement this time is inferior, pretty much like your KUB, inferior to the outer edge of the IR. I'm going to raise the table for comfort. My tube is in transverse detail. I'm going to align my tube and bucky. Securely close my IR. Make sure that my SID, the correct SID, is 40 inches, which on this equipment is 39.8 or 40.2. So, <clears throat> Like I said, in your book, for every different body habitus, your centering level is different and your centering in relation to midline is different. We're going on the premise for your simulations that everyone is thinned, average size, which means that for every one of these positions, projections, you're centering at the level of L1, which is one to two inches above, find the ribs, above, one to two inches above the lower lateral rib margin. Okay. Whatever you do, don't jab your fingers into your patient's side to find mm -hmm. the bottom of the ribs. So, center about an inch, inch and a half above the lower lateral rib margin. In terms of centering to midline, bring your arms away from your body. We're going to center until you see just a thin line of light on the table, a sliver, a smidgen only. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes if, you're, if your patient is wearing loose-fitting clothing, make sure that that light is beyond, is just beyond the, the lateral border of the abdomen, not necessarily beyond the lateral border of their sweatshirt. What if the patient is bigger than? Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. But I see what you're saying. If your patient's bigger... Like if they're kind of like the size of the table kind of sort of? Like. Then you're pretty much going to uh, center more toward midline. Do you see the sliver? Now I'm going to give you your breathing instructions. Take a deep breath in. Blow it all the way out. Hold it. Exposure. You may breathe. So that's the AP. Now for the RAL. If you would, turn on your belly. Don't hit your head. Okay. Same thing for the RAO as far as initial positioning. The right arm is down to the side, the left leg is brought up, and the left leg is, left arm is flexed. Now, so our patient's rotated 45 degrees. And again, we want to make sure that the hips are rotated 45 degrees, Oops, not too much. Bring the shoulders back a little more, because it's important to have the shoulders and the hips rotated the same amount. And if you could, Scoot your hips forward a little bit. There you go. Because we want her straight on the table from head to toe. Once again, we're centering at L1, 
one to two inches above the lower lateral rib margin. And as a guide, that's about at her elbow crease. So again, just like when we were positioning for um, the erect abdomen, and I said, you know, if the IR is way above or, you know, above the armpits or far below the armpits or the axilla, you, you know something's not right. The same using the elbow crease for uh, judging correct centering for the RAO, for the upper GI, not the esophagram. <clears throat> so you don't use that too center, but it's kind of like a guideline to check your centering. And again, we're centering. So there's a little sliver of light, a little thin, little light showing. Is it on both sides or just the left side? Left side, because that's where your stomach is located. We're wanting to be sure that we're getting the stomach. Aha, just like for the esophagram, You've got to make sure to change this marker. I would recommend that when you tell your patient to roll over onto their belly while they're doing it, right then and there, switch your marker for the RAO. So now it's on the correct side. Now for Jaina, we've got slivers of light everywhere. So, So I did recenter a little bit and collimate it in because there was light on both sides. And we don't need that. Okay. Reading instructions, take a breath in. Deep breath in, blow it all the way out. Hold it, exposure. All right. Now then, ma'am, turn on to your right side. Cross your knees, scoot your hips forward on the table. And again, we need to make sure that she's lateral. And straight on the table. Again, we're centering at the level of L1, one to two inches above the, lat the lower lateral rib margin. Now, for the right lateral, we're centering one to one and a half inches anterior to the mid-coronal plane. And if there's light on the table, you want to collimate again until there's just a sliver of light. But the right lateral is the only one of these four projections where you have a definite centering point. I mean, they're all at the level of L1, but this is centered an inch and a half anterior to the mid coronal plane. And if you center an inch and a half, anterior to the mid coronal plane, and you've got light on the table, collimate so that you just have that sliver, thin line of light remaining. You want to make sure these arms are up high enough. You don't, you've got to make sure that you don't have any part of the arms in the light field. No need to change your marker. Now then, taking a deep breath, blow it all the way out, hold it out, exposure. Thank you. Now you may lie on your back. This is the only one of the projections that requires a left marker. 
This is the LPO, left posterior oblique. So one cross your limbs. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I want you to scoot toward me, the whole body. So I'm having her start out closer to me because she's going to roll to her left side. I want to make sure she's centered. This is the LPO, left posterior oblique. And typically you use the marker, marking the side that's closest to the table, which will be her left side. So I've got to put this left marker inferiorly all the way out to the side. Notice my instructions and only do what I'm telling you to do. Cross your right arm, across your chest, I want you to bend up your left, left knee. And then I'm going to hold her shoulder and her leg right here by the knee. And I'm going to say, I'm going to guide her. I want you to roll like a log to your left side. Rest back against this sponge. I'll show you in a minute why I do that. Keep that left leg up. Put your left arm down to your side. Uh, I'm going to center L1, about an inch and a half above the lower outer rib margin, L over. Okay. I've got light on the table in front, and I know her stomach's not over here, all the way to this side. So I'm Jada, I am going to collimate a little bit. So I just had that sliver of light on the table. Jana is asthenic, so if I had the collimator light or the, the light open all the way to 14 and just had a sliver of light to her left side, there still would be just way more exposed here to the right than needed. So that's why I adjusted my centering a little bit closer to the left and then collimated a little. Okay, you wanna make sure that the shoulders and the hips are both rotated equally, 45 degrees. Wanna make sure she's straight on the table, centered on the table, read the instructions, take a deep breath in, blow it all the way out, hold it, exposure, you may breathe. Now, I want your line on your back again. Uh, cross your right arm, across your shoulder, right your left leg, and then roll up toward your left side. Most people, the first thing they do is they scoot their behind out, don't they? And, and you almost did it at first. And then I said, no, let me do this. They, they, and that makes your patient, you can relax now. Because you want them to move evenly. So if they scoot that hip out, your hips will be over rotated, I guarantee it. And it's what they do. And so I was taught to do just what I did. That you guide them and there's no reason to touch anyone's behind, you can use your hand on the leg near the hip, I mean, I'm sorry, near the knee, hand on the shoulder, and then you have this ready to just put right behind them. Okay, thank you very much.